So um, we're going to cover um, forking and branching. So this is a really nice picture here just to show um, what we mean by the different branches. So the main repository here is where we've got our finished work. So all this line in black is all is our main repository. And what we're doing by creating a branch is we are taking the repository and it does it is another it is a copy of the repository, um, but we're making it come into a different branch, so a different a parallel branch, parallel version of the repository. And why we're doing that is because um, it's a temporary place for us to work on a particular. This is calling it a feature. Um, it, to me, it's a bit of work. So it could be anything. You're creating a new document. You're adding in extra data. You're adding in like your metadata files. You're creating a website, something like that. So it can be any change that you want to make on the repository. It's a really good idea to make a branch, even if it's your own repository. Because so basically, if you make a mistake in the branch, well, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect the main repository at all. It doesn't have any effect on it. You can even delete the branch if you decide that you've made a complete muck up and you don't want it anymore. You can just close that branch and it will be, it will be, it's not actually, nothing on GitHub is deleted, but you won't, you won't be actively working on it anymore. It'll be closed. So you can do, you can use a branch to do this if you have write access to the, um, to the repository. So this means that you are allowed to, so either it's your repository or somebody has given you right access. So you have become a collaborator on that particular repository. But forking is a bit different. So this is where you actually create a entire new independent repository that comes into your own account. So branching happens within uh, whoever um, started the repository, the branch will be created within that repository uh, as a parallel to that repository, but it's still within there. But actually the fork copies the entire repository into your own account. So for example, here we've got the Turing Way, um, which is owned by the Alan Turing Institute. So the project, is, the repository is called the Turing Way. But um, Malvika, who's the community manager, she's copied the whole of the Turing Way into her own account. And it's a version of the repository, the whole thing, but it's in her account. And you can work on that there. And then you can try and merge your changes into the main repository. So you can do that when you don't, you don't have any access to, um, uh, to work on a branch. So you're not a collaborator on that project, but you have maybe have an idea you want to add in. So then you could request to bring it back into the main repository. It's also, forking is also really useful if you don't want to put anything back into the original repository. So this is actually really good for making websites. So you might see someone on GitHub that's made a really great website, and but you want to use it as a template for your own website. So you basically can fork their GitHub repository and you're never going to merge it back in. You're basically going to create it and you're going to move things around. You're going to add in your own documents to make your website, but you're using it as a template for your own work. And as long as people have put on there, on the GitHub repository, that you're allowed to do that, then it's absolutely fine. So you need to have a bit of a look at their licenses. Usually people are really open on GitHub. But um, yeah, so either either it's um, you use a fork where it's you don't have access to the repository as a collaborator um, uh, or you want to use that repository for your own work and as a template and you don't want to ever merge it back into the main repository. So um, if you do want to, so if, if you've opened a branch or you've opened a fork um, and you want to put them back into the main repository, then you have to open a pull request. And this creates a document really on GitHub to allow you to do that. So it, it shows um, the person who is going to approve it, shows them what work you've done, um, and it, uh, you can write messages and have a bit of a conversation about what you've done and um, the fact that you want to merge it back into the main repository. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a bit of a go at um, forking. So um, I found, after I go back, I found these blue blue pictures a bit confusing. So I made my own, I made my own version that makes that makes sense to me a bit about, about um, what it's all about. So, Forking is where we don't have our own repository um, and we aren't, um, we just, so we don't own the repository, 
and we aren't an official collaborator of that particular project or with that particular person. So we find the main repository and we're going to press the fork button. So what that does is it moves that um, repository into our own account. OK, so the main repository is in somebody else's account and it might be someone you know, it might be someone you don't know at all. Um, so you fork it, um, you put it into your own account. So it's a very independent version. Then you can work on it however you like. You can do all the edits, which is what I'm representing with the pencil. Once you finish those edits, as I said, you don't have to. If they're just for you, you don't need to do a pull request. But if you if you want to add into the main repository again, so for example, if you've seen um, on the main repository that maybe um, there's some mistakes in their documents, maybe it's just something small like grammatical changes or spelling mistakes or something, then you make those changes, you create a pull request, and then that actually, once you've committed, the, so once you've saved the pull request, the pull request actually gets put into that person's repository, so they will then be able to see it. So that's something that's a bit weird. You start off the pull request in your fork, your forked repository, your forked branch. Once you've committed it, it moves into theirs, so they are able to see it. So once that's done, you're not going to be the person that deals with that pull request. It will be the original owner of the repository. So the work the work you're doing it goes it goes on outside of um, the main repository and that's the idea because you're not wanting to affect the main repository you're wanting to do the work independently and then ask if you can put that work into the um, into the main repository so you're it, this is creating a collaborative workflow for you that you're able to do work in a separate branch someone is going to review it for you so then it's the reviewing is not um, like um, it's not really like a yes or a no, it's, it's for collaboration, it's for someone to work with you. So like you would work on a Google Doc where people make suggestions and things like that, that's what the pull request is for, is for making suggestions, uh, suggesting edits, suggesting more adding of things if it's a um, particular bit of work that you're doing or some code analysis code that you're working on, something like that. And then, um, and then you'll, when you finish that bit of work, you'll merge it into the main repository. So it's, so it's then merged with all the rest of the work. Um, so, so we're gonna um, we're gonna have a go at doing this. So what you're gonna do in a minute, and I'll show you the process of all of this, is you're gonna fork a repository. You're gonna work um, on your forked copy of the repository. Um, and just to make you aware that all the I've put quite detailed instructions of the, tar the exercises we're going to do today, they're in the HackMD document with all the links and everything. So um, I'm going to talk through it, but all the instructions are there um, for, you to, for you to read again. Um, so, um, so once you've made the change and the change we're going to make today is you're just literally going to write your name and you're going to put your GitHub user uh, username. Um, and make a little comment. There's a little question. So it's just a little bit of writing is the, is the change. So making a little edit on a document. And then uh, you're going to make a full request for the changes that um, you've made. And then the, the owner, who's, who actually is me of this repository, I'm going to review the pull request and, and I'm going to then, we're going to then merge it. Okay. So this sounds probably totally scary. So how do we do this? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find the repository. So the link for the repository is in the HackMD document, or you can find it um, in the slides um, that you've got access to. So it's this one here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into this. So you can see this is in Open Fighterlist. So this is in our um, in our uh, organizational um, account. Because we have a Open Fighterlist is a uh, organization on GitHub. Um, so uh, you're going to press fork and then what you'll see is that it will it will move over into your account so what you're going to see is your name will become here and um, it will say icops training 2022 then what you're going to do is so this over here once you press the fork button that's your name is going to appear over here um, and that means that this is your copy now so it will say um, um, i would say ecaroon ICOPS training 2021 at uh, 2022. I've got the year wrong. And I'm going to make a change. So I'm going to find the file. And the file I want you to work on is this workshop participant session two. 
uh, markdown.md, which is a markdown file. So find that file and then you're going to press the pencil button and you're going to edit it. So it says here you've got to add your name, you've got to add your GitHub username, and then you've got to answer the question. So you're just going to type down here what it is. And then once you've done that, remember to scroll down to the bottom and you're going to press the commit button. OK, the green commit button. Um, and remember to write your commit message, which can be something like um, I did my details to the document, something like that. Um, and then once you've done that, you're going to start your pull request. So on the repository, you're going to go to, um, it doesn't, uh, for, to start a pull request, it doesn't actually matter where you are in the repository. You can actually start a pull request from anywhere in the repository. So you're going to press the pull, the pull request button is sort of at the, at the top of the repository always, and it's always there um, at the top, whatever page of the repository you're on, whatever document. So you're going to press that. And then there should be nothing, no pull requests, because you just forked that repository. So there won't be any active uh, pull requests. So you're going to go across to the new pull request button, which I've just made a bit bigger here. You're going to press that. And then it comes up and it's a bit like a form, what you'll see. So you'll see this open a pull request, this bit at the bottom here. Um, and what you do is you type in a title in this sort of blue outlined box. And you don't really need to type anything else. I would just type the title, adding, you know, adding my details or something like that. And then remember to press the green button, which is the sort of commit button to create the pull request. And that's all you need to do. So you're going to fork the repository. So find the repository, you're going to fork it. Then you're going to find the document, edit the document, and then you're going to do a pull request. So find the pull request press the green pull request button, give it a title, and then press the green button to create a pull request. Okay, so what happens then is the owner of the repository